I'm Brian McQuarrie, I play drums. I'm a founding member. Uh, my name is Rob Potter, I'm a founding member. Keys, guitar, mandolin, whatever needs to be done. Uh, yeah, my name is Derek Bro, and I play bass and sing, uh, play guitar in a few episodes, and I'm a founding member. So I'm Mike Vandermark, a uh, founding member. I sing a lot, I uh, play some guitar and keys and a little drums and bass and just whatever it takes to get a video done and just kind of help organize this crazy crew. <laughs> Mike, what was, the, what was the very first moment when you said, uh, we need to do this? I, where did you get the idea? The clearest picture I can have, and I'm sure I've had ideas around it, was I was on a vacation with my wife. Um, and saw live at Daryl's house, which is uh, at the time was mostly on the internet, and I think it was on some cable stations. And it's Daryl Hall, and he would bring guests in and play a few of his tunes, a few of the guest tunes. And I had little kids and didn't want to play in the bars a whole lot anymore. And I talked to Derek, um, and just we just were like, let's let's just get together and do this note for note thing, and see how that goes. And then I knew Neil, and I thought. Well, we should probably video it or capture it somehow because I don't know you learn all these songs and who's going to come out on a Friday night somewhere in Lexington and really is that going to be worth all that work plus I didn't really want to do the late night bar thing and so uh, that some of the video guys were like yeah we'll come try that and so it was just a uh, just a love of music and then just knowing some musicians and knowing these guys and saying would you come together and do this and um, so yeah, I was watching that on TV going, hmm, that's something we could do. And uh, I just, I just love, to, love to recreate and put things together. So it just a little spark on little vacation. Spark. <laughs> and then it grew. But the first actual session, did it look pretty much just like what we're seeing today? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would ask these guys. I'd ask these guys. I, no, we I don't look like deer in a headlight. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see a lot of differences, but uh, I think it, they still hold up uh, pretty yeah. well. I don't know what you guys think about that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. yeah, musically, um, I think I, I can remember talking to V at an Outback Steakhouse, and he had this idea, and <laughs> we're both kind of like, oh, you know, our kids are so small, we want to play music. And it was just really a way that we could play really quality music with a bunch of quality guys because Lexington's a weird place. It's, I mean, there are so many outstanding musicians yeah. in this town. And so we were like, we can totally get together some people and we can do these songs justice and kind of pay, pay tribute to to these songs and artists. And, and in the same way, like, film them, put them up on YouTube, maybe somebody will watch it, maybe they won't, but we're not gonna be gone from our families from Thursday to Saturday, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a win-win for all of us. And then to answer your question, the, the first time that we kind of all got together, we, we all just rehearsed on our own, tried to like, the expectation was learn your part, come in, we're gonna play it, we're gonna film it, and we're gonna go home. Yeah, and we did it, was, it all one evening. We did it one evening. <laughs> I don't even know if we, we kind of sound checked, yeah. and then just jumped in. Yeah. And I can remember, we played Listen to the Music by the Doobie Brothers, the very first song. Yeah. And I can remember thinking, and I think there was a sense around the band like, oh, yeah, that was a lot better than I yeah, thought it was going to be. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did anybody else remember the first that first set? Were you four part of that first session? Oh, Listening yeah. to the music was the first song you played yeah. in that first yeah. session. Yeah, I think the weirdest thing about it was we had learned the the parts and come in, but then you forget about that you've got a camera on you. So all of a sudden, you have to stop thinking about the parts you're playing and pretend like you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Perform. Yeah. yeah, we have to. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if you watch them, you can see that yeah. in our faces. I think you can see that. Yeah. Uh, some concentration. We didn't really rehearse very well for that first one. Hmm. Um, we were kind of rehearsing and filming and all at once. And <laughs> we're still a, working out. Yeah, they, yeah. We, we were, <laughs> yeah, we were working out a lot of stuff. But there is still a magic to that first session. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the the what a fool believes is still one of my favorite versions yeah. of of stuff we've done. It just has a there's a life mm -hmm. to that song when you watch it. Um, that really, 
that was the song out of the first session that made me go, let's do this again. It's kind of like when you play golf and you're terrible, and then <laughs> on the 18th you hit the green you and you're like, oh, I'm, I got to do this again. You know, <laughs> that was the song for yeah. me, and that video still holds up. Yeah, this is the rhythm yeah. section, really. Yeah, it really was. It's the <laughs> opening drum. <laughs> drum. <laughs> <laughs> it really is in a lot of ways. In that first session, was there any? Were there chill bumps? Were there any like tears that you wouldn't share? Uh, Anything like that that just starts to, that you start to feel? A sense of relief after it was done. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what the other group yeah. said too. We're not, we're not an overly excitable group. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that there's many chill bumps yeah. going around yeah. in this group. <laughs> there, there have been sessions where you do get chill yeah, bumps. Eagles absolutely. was one of those. Yeah. And we did the Eagle session. I mean, we'd get done with a cut and we'd all just look at each other and go, yeah, yeah, okay, this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really neat. I, I just think that's anytime you can feel like that, it's oh, just yeah. really special. What do you remember mm -hmm. about the first session, anything? Well, initially it was all pitched in a minute and a half elevator pitch in the <laughs> parking lot mm -hmm. after a drum clinic that we went to. Yeah, that's <laughs> it was right. like, hey, I've got this idea. I was like, okay, I'm in, just come Yeah. In. And then we, we show up and it was like, okay, these are the, we do, was it four or five? We I did think four, it was four, four songs at that yeah. point. And, um, and it was like it was just everybody just knew their parts and it was like I I haven't been a part of something like that before it was special in the sense where you just show up everybody did their homework great people great musicians and and mm -hmm. and just execute <laughs> can I ask a specific how long does it take start to finish to produce one song or would you say it's a whole session like those videos that are so well done especially at this point in your 10 years mm -hmm. can can you put a time on how long it would take so if I, I think everybody's preparation time is probably different. So before you show up, it used to be that sometimes people only got about a month's notice, um, depending on the artist. I, I remember when we did Steely Dan, I gave people like three months notice. <laughs> and I think we even had an extra rehearsal for that, just, just because it was- So complex. That was early on, and we we're still trying to get our feet under us, and I didn't really want to mess that one up. That was the um, first session we used horns, too. We did use horns yeah. and had background vocals, yeah. and that was a, that was a that was a step a monumental like step for us yeah. that session um, but so people generally a month or more to kind of work on their parts and and we try and be pretty specific about here's exactly which especially with guitar players here's your part here's your part because they can kind of get confused if you mm -hmm. if you're just throwing it out there so but once we do it um, the model used to be f rehearse one night film one night now it's rehearse and film in the same nights but we're we're doing less songs and it's so it's all in one night but it it could be i could turn around one of those songs in a week or two um that's the tightest timeline often it can be it could be months too just depending on what's going on in my personal life or if we need to fix something or bring something in or um you know all those sort of things but it's it's uh the video edit part is actually the shortest amount it takes about an hour to edit a video down um because we have all these great takes and I'm editing with my ear, so I'm saying, what do I want to hear? It's pretty quick to go, that's a keys part, let me go find the right keys part, we put it in. So I can get a video edit done in about an hour. It's the audio mixing that, you know, I take the three different takes that we do and I make them, put them together and make them sound good. So that, that can take a while, but. Plus you're trying to match what the original. Yeah, to a point, yeah. absolutely. It, the audio mix though is what is so magical about that. So that is, I, that's why I was really curious. I just and, think fans want to know that's that. Ours. Yeah, and that's he's ours. the one that mixes all yeah, that. So he does a fantastic job. That's ours. Yeah. Um, I do put the original away pretty quickly. Um, I'll stop, let, so you pick a song, um, Separate Ways by Journey, you know. I'll be listening to it, especially as we're preparing. We do it, and then I'll start mixing without listening to the original again because the, it, you can pretty much start banging your head against the wall going, I can't get that exact reverb, or I can't make the drums sound exactly like that. Yeah. And I'll only go back to the original if I'm like struggling. And so our mixes tend to have a more modern sound or a different sound than the originals. And some people go, oh, that's so much better. And it's like, well, it's just different tools. Like we have just an easier process than they did back in the day. Yeah. Um, I would never say they're better. Um, they might be cleaner or they, you might be able to understand the words better or different yeah. things, but it's not because the engineers of the day weren't amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, can take, it, it can take a lot of hours in the studio basement at night. And yeah, so. There's nothing better though than after a shoot, with, it's usually within a day or two, you get the text on your phone in the group. It's like, 
here's here's the first initial mix down. Yeah, we just get to hear it like for the first time, and that's to me that's probably one of the more, the more exciting parts is waiting for that text to come through. <laughs> that's how you know if Vandy's excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> how quick, how quickly. How quickly. Did he yeah. Yeah. I did that's, this session six months ago and I haven't heard anything. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not a good sign. Might right? be true. <laughs> <laughs> might be true. <laughs> Can you for at least believe how people have responded? I mean. To L, to to lab band? No. So are you all? You're genuinely surprised oh, by what has happened here? Yeah, we're, we're a cover band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, and people they, within what three sessions that we did, we did doobies, then cars, then what was that? Uh, we did Merle? doobies. We did Merle Haggard, the cars. That's you right. didn't do the Merle one. Oh, we did the, the the cars, and then we did U two. Yeah. No, there was one. Uh, Billy Squire was in there. No, it was the the next year. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was the next June. What do I know? He's, <laughs> he's getting old. Too. I, but I, it, I, was, it was uh, it was the Doobie Brothers, and then because we got like we got like three thousand views on that one, and we were like, "Wow, people are watching <laughs> this! <laughs> this is crazy! I'm so like, now. this is gonna be awesome, right?" So I was like, "We got to do we got to do one quick," and so we called Kevin and Jay, who who I was in a country band with, and. And I knew he would know some of the country stuff, and we made him learn country because he'd never <laughs> listened to it. So we real quick threw through Merle Haggard set together, um, and did it in this tobacco barn in Winchester, and just wow. you know that was a, our first foray real early into trying to go out and do it like in an uncontrolled environment, um, and it was great. And then we did the cars in Broderson. Steve came in, that's mm -hmm. right. and that's when I knew we can add guests in because I didn't really know Steve that well. I just knew of him, and it, and. Uh, I mean, I, I, friends of friends, so I knew he would fit in, but I didn't know. And we did the cars, and I remember walking away from the cars going, oh, this, this is something, this could really work. Yeah. Like, we could bring in the right guitar player, or bring in the right singer, or, or you know, bring in a horn player, and we could really go after this. Because the cars, if you know them well, I mean, the synthesizers have to be right, the mm -hmm. guitars aren't, aren't standard, There's a, they have their own sound and their own thing, and then their vocals are very unique. Mm -hmm. And so when we did the cars in, in August, um, I was like, okay, this is, we can do this. This is pretty, this can be special, at least musically. Mm -hmm. Views-wise, again, we were getting a couple thousand views thinking we were just on top of the world, <laughs> you know? So it, it, now it's, I mean, it's, when did that change? When did it go from a couple thousand views to a whoa? What the I heck? mean, really, really COVID. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> really COVID. I mean, yeah. it grew a little bit before that, but um, for whatever reason, in August of 2020, our "Waiting for a Girl Like You" foreigner video, which is really good, but it's not. I, I mean, it's 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 fine. It's it's done well. People must really love that song. Uh, I. You know, because it it just blew up all what's of a sudden. Last, what's the last count on that? Uh, it's at twenty two million right now. Yeah. And can you look in the analytics and see if maybe it hit a different country that well, people really like? Uh, you that know, song? you can. It we we actually do get a lot of a lot of views from Brazil uh, and Australia, um, some of those places. But it just it just took off in general. Um, mm. And I guess. I don't know if Foreigner had released something new. I or wonder whatever. if they went on to and I don't think they just, did in It just elevated everything. Everything just started to grow. Yeah. And so we used to get, you know, four or five thousand views on a video in a in the first month, you know, and now we'll get four thousand views in the first night. Oh, and it's just you guys. You know, we've gone from before August of twenty twenty we had like one and a half million total views. Now we get one and a half million a month. Right, so you can't explain that because we don't do any marketing, we don't do any advertising. There's no, I mean, it's just people just they just really want to, I guess, hear what we do. And do you have subscribers it. that are yeah. helping fuel that? Sure, I mean, it grows by a couple thousand a month, and okay. we're almost 150,000 on YouTube now. Okay, so, so you, and again, you, before that, we had 11,000. We have the YouTube plaque to put. To put yeah, we have a little yeah. plaque. <laughs> that is so fun. Yeah. It's just interesting because, of course, I don't know how the algorithm, algorithms of all that Nobody work, but does. something is going on. So I guess I was just wondering if you guys just bat this around and have any words to even put to why you believe people have responded so strongly to Labvent. Because it reminds them of a time in their life when, you know, when they hear a foreigner tune and they go, I was I was a freshman in high school when that tune mm -hmm. came out and you know yeah. and to be able to connect because I mean everyone in the group is very accessible so I think the fact yeah. that they can 
you know, say, this was great, and then we reply to them online. I mean, that means a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. People love behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. They always have. So anytime that they can kind of get behind the scenes or have communication with, with the band itself, that's huge. So I, I think it has a lot to do with it. Derek, you're a lot younger, though, so what's your take on it? <laughs> Did you hear that? No. <laughs> Oh, wow. I think yeah, you are. You. Let yeah. me tell you. Hold on. Sit down. Sit down. I say this because Derek was a kid when I was in South right. Africa. To me, you're still. I feel like there's Piers and then there's no, Derek. You're, you're, <laughs> you're right. Are you as old as all the rest of the? I just baby? pulled a hammy when I. Came. <laughs> oh no. He's got to go make his oatmeal cookies. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Sam's Club. Uh, to, to answer the the first question, uh, I think there's something really interesting about a band that doesn't try to feature the the lead vocal as the performance yeah. if that makes sense mm -hmm. so when i'm yeah. when i'm listening to something and i'm trying to pick out these parts i'll listen to a song that i've heard a hundred times and i'll hear something in it like oh man i never even picked up on that little nuance yeah well, what's cool i think is our viewers can can see that visually because Bandy knows where all those little parts are mm -hmm. and he's if there's like a little lick somewhere that's really hidden you can see the guy's fingers play it and then, then the other person's it. not searching for it they see it right in front of their face yeah. so I think that's mm -hmm. kind of like bringing them into the process of learning it musically yeah if that makes sense well I, I I really think it's so fun and it's been fun to share this with the it's so neat to see the song take the absolute center stage and where you're not blinded by MTV style video where mm -hmm. it's the crazy outfits and the whatever it's all about the favorite lick that you love that you sing to in the shower that the background harmony you mm -hmm. know this one part blah 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 and it just brings it all to life in such a unique way yeah. that it's never been presented before I almost wonder if you realize you were doing that I think that was a subtle that is just how you hear the song because you're yeah. a musician yeah the uh, I'll I tell people when they ask a little bit about it, the the brand of the lab band is almost as much video as it is audio and there will be some people that give us feedback that why didn't you show the whole guitar solo like why are you taking the camera off the lead singer there or why are you doing and I've tried to stick to our guns a little bit to go, it's, a, it's an entirely holistic experience. So while that guitar solo is going on, there's also maybe a really interesting drum part. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay to take your attention, you're still listening to it, but take your attention and go, oh man, I didn't know that that drum part was there. Or there's this one keyboard note on the organ and we'll pepper that in, even if it's in the middle of this blistering guitar solo, yep. because everybody sees the guitar solos all the time in every cover. And if you watch a a live a concert, you know, they're just going to show that guitar player for five minutes while exactly. he's... And so that brand is intentional. And like the keyboard I'm, player is never featured. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that's very intentional. Like I, I, I kind of stick to my guns in the video edit style because, um, you know, when, when they get excited, you know, when I text that mix out, I get excited when I take the mix and I start putting it to video because it immediately sounds better. As soon as I see it, it's like there's something strange and I don't know if it's physics or what, but there's something when I can see it and hear it, it automatically sounds better to me. So um, we're, we're starting to stream the music on online and, and Apple music and all that stuff. And, and I've listened to it, but it, without the video for me, it's not quite, it's not quite what I hope for. Doesn't even. have the magic. It just doesn't. I just, yeah. there's something about seeing it that just makes my ears open up. And, uh, and I want to see, I just want to, when, when that bass player does a little thing, I just kind of want to see it. Absolutely. And, it's uh, like, for me, I watch those videos and I go, oh, it's the first time. Yeah. Oh, this is what I've been wanting to see this whole yeah. time. I knew they played the keys on that part. I knew that little, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. then you get to go home and practice it yourself yeah. and all that exciting stuff. Yeah. It, it really does bring yeah. the viewer in in such yeah. a unique way that I have not been able to see yeah. in any other project. Yeah. That's a thrill. Yeah. Yeah. It, does it take some of the pressure off as the lead singer? No. No. no, camera's still going the whole no, time. No, it's <laughs> yeah. I, I would. I. I mean, everybody should. Everybody does a great job, and everybody has to work hard. From someone who's had to sing on these projects, that's the hardest seat. It's the hardest seat. Get the right words. Get the right cutoffs. Get the right inflections. 
and then have people tell you that you don't sound like Steve Perry. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's just, it's fine though. Like, like I know. Because you're not I, trying not, to be Steve Perry. I'm not Steve Perry. I, I'm yeah. trying to do my best to accomplish his parts. Yep. Or they'll say, why'd you take that down a half step? Well, because we have different DNA. You know, like yeah. <laughs> he can sing a half step higher than me. So, so yeah, the, the, the lead vocal spot is always the hottest seat. Um, and it should be. I mean, it's, you're, you're, it's you. You're, the instrument is you. You know, you can't hide behind gear and sounds and all that. So vocalists should always feel uh, really proud of what they do because they're all incredible. It's the ultimate putting yourself yeah. out there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the Bruce Springsteen, did you guys see 20 Feet from Stardom? Is that the name of that documentary? With it's background, um, background vocals. Oh. But it, Bruce had, was in it in this particular documentary. It's about Darlene Love mm-hmm. in particular. But yeah. um, And he said, you know, it's a long walk to the front mm-hmm. and it's a complicated walk to the front. Mm-hmm. And I think there's to be that front person yeah. is really a whole different animal. And what's been fun about watching the lab band is that it's like you're just a big col- collection. Mm. I mean, yes, Mike, you're the front person later of this band, but I don't know if the fans know that mm. because of it's such a collective thing and no one mm. has to be that person. Yeah. You all get to shine yeah. your talents in your unique ways yeah. with music that touches people yeah. from their youth. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I would say too, What's probably unique about Lab Band is nobody's aspiring to be famous. Mm-hmm. We're all in it for the music yeah. and the fun. We are. And it's the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the old guys, it's their last shot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? But, oh, just... but to that point, Mike, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going back to you again, but I think yeah. when it comes to ego, uh, I only know this because of our earlier conversations, yeah. but I mean, how do you weed people out? Is there criteria, or is, or does it naturally happen? Or do, well, are they not brought in in the first place? People come in naturally just because people know them. Um, very few people have come into the family that came in cold, where there wasn't a connection with someone who's already playing. Um, and you, uh, we just haven't had. We just, we're honestly, probably blessed uh, to just not have to deal with that very much or if, if at all but if you came in with a, with a whole lot of or any amount of you'd feel really uncomfortable because it's Cause not it's, allowed it's like it's uh, just, sorry it, it's it's unspoken but it's everybody's like man you sound great or oh man you, you're gonna kill that part or or at the live show is the is the biggest picture to that i wish people could stand backstage or even hear the musicians they're so happy for it. Like a guitar player so happy to watch somebody else play a killer guitar solo yeah. and just be like, oh man, that's awesome. Like there's no like, why didn't I get that? Or there's plenty of great music to go around. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, you know we're, we're very discerning when we do a certain band or a certain song. We're going we're gonna to ask people that will, that will be able to accomplish that stylistically. But we do so many different styles that there's an opportunity for just about anybody. Um, and so the ego is, I mean, it, it, it exposes itself really quick and it hasn't really, because again, there's so many personal relationships that come into this. Um, this, this celebrates a lot of central Kentucky musicians and a little bit broader than that in a few cases. Um, but it's not just, Hey, who's the greatest guitar player in town? It's, Hey, I know this guy, he's a really great guy. Or I know this girl and she's awesome and she can sing. Yeah, let's let's try it, or you know those sort of things. So, word of mouth and relationship. That's that's really yeah. the name of the game with the band is relationships. So. And also, it, there's a little sense of honor being asked to to do or a, a session with in the Lexington Lab Band. I mean, it's kind of a big deal for musicians. You're like, this is these are A level players, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that has a lot to do with it too, since there's no egos about that. Because honestly, people that come in for the first time, you can see a little bit of you know they're terrified a little bit because who um the guitar player boston from new england tom lasega yeah i mean he came down from new england to, to play on the boston session and he just walked in you know wide-eyed going oh my this is amazing you know that kind of thing yeah. so and he's a phenomenal player just you guys will get a real kick out of hearing the sound bites from earlier and the people yeah. who the number of i don't i don't i don't belong here i don't mm-hmm. deserve this yeah, i was yeah, so yeah. nervous it's really sweet yeah. it's, you're gonna get a real a real kick nice. out of it when it came to the live shows, Derek, it was you, right? Who said, let's do a live show. Tell me about that moment. <laughs> so you're the, <laughs> is, you're the one to blame, man. Uh, <laughs> you ruined my, my wife's summer every day. It's all for charity. Yeah, so I was leaving 
uh, to go to California to help a church plant out there. And we did a couple of years and it was basically the same, maybe five, six, seven guys that had played on all these episodes. So at that point we had a catalog of maybe 35 songs ish. So I told V, I was like, Hey, I know you don't want to play out, but just this one time before I go, we got 35 <laughs> songs. Let's just rent a place and let's we'll never do it again. We won't, yeah, it'll be the one time <laughs> thing. Yeah. And uh, then he took it and ruined it. And <laughs> <laughs> kept doing it for 10 years, I guess, too. <laughs> Where was that first gig? It's at the Lyric Theater in downtown Lexington. It's a 500 seat room and it sold out in like four days. And again, we were like, wow, 500 people. Because I yeah. thought if we get 250 people of our of our family and friends, that'll be yeah. that'll be lucky. And it sold out in two days. We did that there two years, and then we went to Transylvania. It's a thousand seat room at Transy. Uh, we did that, I think, four years. It sold, sold out every year. Yeah. Sold out every year. Uh, took COVID year off, and we've done two outdoor ones. Um, and uh, those can't sell out because we're on a big old farm. But it's been how a lot many of fun. people came out for those live shows? Uh, the last one was about what we could estimate because we give a, we give away a lot of complimentary tickets to family of the band and stuff, and so it's not exactly accurate. But we we estimate we had almost twenty two hundred last year. Twenty two hundred so, from all from California to Massachusetts from to. Overseas. Uh, yeah, one guy flies from England about every year to see it. It's, Wiggy. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> again, we're just a cover band. It makes no sense. But, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it, that has become, like, the hardest thing we do, but also really the most rewarding thing we do. Well, to be with real people and yeah. to hear and to see. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you ever see people, like, acting like Beatles fans where they cry or throw anything? <laughs> Well, you asked us earlier about the emotion, and if you want to see this guy cry, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm glad to know that you're human and not a yeah, robot out I'm there. The you're cry. the crier. I didn't think oh, you were yeah. the crier, Mike. Yeah, at the, yeah. There's something about it. It's, it's. You can't again. It's supposed to be rock and roll, and you're supposed to be cool, and all those things. But but it's family. When you get yeah. 40, 50 yeah. plus musicians to buy into one another and. Uh, support one another and you know there's something about it it's just it's just different it's just different than anything i've ever done um you know so yeah usually at the show there's some tears just because i appreciate it i just appreciate so much everybody willing to just put up with this crazy stuff that that's so cool are you are you more i'm getting teary-eyed are you more appreciative of your fellow bandmates are you appreciative of the fans or are you appreciative of your wife that suffers through it <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Chad, you better say Chad, the last one. one. <laughs> you say the last one, baby. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, no, she's great. Um, no, it's well, yes, to all of it, but it's the it's the fellow musicians, the people you've talked to. Um, we're not just we're not just partners in music. These are, I mean, this family. It's 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 uh, it's just yeah. You, I I want to do it because of them. Like I just want to get together with them. I, you know, I could, I could record stuff in my basement by myself, or, you know, I could call Rob and go, hey, let's do something together, you know. But as this is, how can we put more and more people together and different puzzle pieces to make this puzzle, and then we'll take this piece and make this piece, and you start to do that, and you see all the relationships form, and then again, it really is a selfless thing, like. When we get together and we're backstage and we're talking before we go and you just look around the room and go, this doesn't make any sense. Like, mm -hmm. it makes no sense that we have 16 guitar players that can talk to one <laughs> another and not be jealous of one another yeah. or, or, you know, four or five drummers that are happy to give up their seat. I mean, we've got guys like Ryan plays on a ton of videos, but at the live show, he'll let other drummers play songs that he filmed, you know, just because it, it's just, we're just passing around the, the joy the, the opportunity. and the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's usually what makes me cry is the just thinking about all the people, mm. um, the musicians and the crew and, and the camera ops and just everybody going, this doesn't make any sense, mm. but we do it because we want to be together. And there is something, um, there is something about doing this music that brings people back. And that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see in the crowd is you'll kick into a, you know, you'll kick into a, a Leonard Skinner tune 
and they'll all just up on their feet like yeah. they're seeing Leonard Skinner and you're like this doesn't make any sense but okay let's go <laughs> you know so yeah it's it's a pretty special event it's hard to explain to people well I mean also there's there's always a connection between musicians too there's there's something about that I it's it's I can't explain it yeah. I, I can't verbalize what that is but when you connect with someone from a music standpoint that bond is rarely ever broken mm -hmm. and once again I can't explain it but we're all brothers and brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in this whole music mess mm -hmm. <laughs> that's basically what it comes down to mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's yeah. a cool that's true there yeah. is something yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to talk a little bit if I can just sure. you were you were talking about ego and just the, the way that this was organized early Should on. Should I leave? No, no, but, but this, is about, this is about you. This is about you, so it's good, it's good. You're the example, um, and it's a good one. Uh, you know, when we originally started, it was, hey, we'll, we'll just get these core group of guys together, and we'll bring in the guests to kind of accomplish this, and that worked for a while, and it was good, but um, there was a point when we did the Boston episode mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't remember if we had a conversation. I think we did, where we you did. were like, where you're like, man, that's just not me. Well, I was going into a film. Yeah, he's a he's a composer. He's a real professional musician. Cool. <laughs> and, and I yeah. was I yeah. schedule wise, and I knew yeah. I was going to woodshed him and stuff. It. And I just called him and said, Danny, I'm a so he's that. like, I don't have time for that. It's not really my thing. The the B three thing and all that, man. I just don't think I can do that. So you know, Austin was I think 18 or 19 years old, and. I remember, I've told this story a bunch, but it's a great story. I remember walking up to him, I thought, I think he can do this. So I said, hey, we're gonna do this Boston thing in August. And this was probably like in April or something. And I said, hey, do you think you could listen to Four Play a long time? It starts with this big organ yes. thing. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I think so. And he was quiet, you know, teenage, you know, late teenage guy, he's real quiet. He's like, I think I can probably do that, you know. I said, well, you've got like, you got like four months. So like in a month, let's check back in and we'll, kind of see where you're at you know and uh a week later i get one of those texts and it's him just playing it note for note <laughs> and i called rob and i said hey man i think we're gonna do boston and i hate that you're not gonna be part of it and he's like oh that's totally fine you know no big deal and then the videos come out and rob says to me hey man you don't ever have to use me again <laughs> like, I, I, was call, like, I was like you you use him whenever you can use him because because wow. and so that kind of began cool. the, that kind of began the thing where it was like hey we're willing to give up our seats for the right person and that kind of began kind of the the metamorphosis of the whole thing to go hey let's let's take this and let's just take every session at a blank slate and just try and really kind of go and get the right people so we went kind of from a unit to going and we'll, we'll do a lot of them, but, you know, if it needs to be a different drummer or if it needs to be a different bass player or, you know, I don't need to sing on it or do that, you know, we can do that. And so you begin to see that year four and five and on. It's, yes, you see a lot of the same faces, but you're not always going to see all of us in every video. And so we kind of went more to a, just a, we're all members. It's a no collective. Longer, it's no longer, mm -hmm. it's no longer the original guys and guests. It's like, we're just all members now. That had to be a so. relief to be able to go do the rest of your other work and wow. You know, it, it takes a lot of preparation to, yes. to do one of these sessions. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't have a, <laughs> never had a problem with it. And I remember when I saw the, the Boston video, <laughs> when I saw Austin playing foreplay, yeah. I called Vandy and, mm -hmm. I, and he said this, but I called him, I said, dude, this kid is a freak of nature. I said, if you want him to play keys full time, go for it. He's 100 times the player I will ever hope to be. So well, just take him. Sure. And, uh, and it, Austin is just amazing. Just an amazing musician. How do you know when you're choosing a song, what is gonna bring the most universal goosebumps to people? Um, so, so it's not really about number of views even though it has really exploded and we do watch that really closely and we celebrate hey this one's really taken off or that sort of thing but when we choose songs they have to be songs that either the person singing or like a certain guitar player or different thing really love so we do some songs like we just released a couple of 90s songs a green day song and a alice in chains song which which are 90s heavy dark that we know yeah there's gonna be some people who are like, that's not for me, but we loved it. Like, and there's a lot of times, and Ryan can attest to this, because yeah. he loves a lot of that music too, that's not gonna get a lot of clicks. People will go, man, I always hated Green Day, but that was pretty good, <laughs> like, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 
So <laughs> so it's not always about like, hey, here's the big hit. Yeah. That that people are gonna really, um, and that was true from the beginning when when we did just artists and we're doing you know. Uh, the police, let's say, um, you know, we had three like really big hits, and then we had two songs that really weren't. But because they were my favorite band, I was yeah. like, I want to do those two songs, and they're great because we all loved them. You mm -hmm. know, there was a personal connection to it. Mm -hmm. So, the decision making on what songs and what artists and sort of things is, is always has a personal uh, component to it. Um, and so, you know, if it doesn't get a whole lot of views, that's fine. I'm still really proud of it. You mm -hmm. know, so. yeah, no. but we still got. The connection and playing it and performing yeah. it, mm -hmm. even if it's not getting the views, like it's, yeah. it's yeah. still a win for us. It's a win for us. That's right. <laughs> the, well, when you're talking about collaboration, yeah, when you know it's bringing joy to your counterpart, it makes you you're going to learn it and you're going to mm -hmm. love it because they love it mm -hmm. and you love each other. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Um, you know, uh, one of the, I think it's, I remember when I guess Facebook banned you guys. Was that right? Did they oh. Facebook? Uh, Eagles. That's a whole <laughs> the thing. Eagles have blocked us. Oh, and, the Eagles have and blocked us. I actually did lose my Facebook personal account because of copyright stuff. And I just yeah. think there's a lot of people that are curious, yeah. again, as a fan, yeah. how are you allowed to put this stuff out there? Uh, for the most part, because YouTube is built in, in a way that supports this, um, any artist can come on and demand our video get taken down. Oh. Uh, if they want. There's a way for them to do that with their publisher. Okay. Um, the Eagles are the only one who's ever done that. Um, mm. Usually, they will just claim the video as a publisher and say, we're going to put ads on it and make money. And so, YouTube has a great ecosystem that allows, allows for this. Okay. So, there's really not any administrative work on our end. Okay. Um, Every time I go to do a video, I put a test up early in the week just to see what's going to happen with copyright. Like, what do you <laughs> mean a test up? I put the video up, oh, okay. just private. Oh, okay. Just to see if it's going to get tagged or blocked or, and really the Eagles have been the only ones that have ever, and why would you block? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. We're, we're, we're promote, we're free advertising for them, but they don't, they don't see it. Don Henley doesn't see it that way. So. Since this is for the fans, well, who are your fans? What do the analytics show? Oh, 60 year old men. Um, really, I mean, it's, okay. it's over. Okay. It's, Rob. It's, <laughs> it's, it really is predominantly men. Um, what's interesting though, when you meet people at the live show, um, it's usually couples and the, and the ladies like it just as much. So I don't know if, the, if they're just logged in you know that way, but man, they'll come and they both really want to talk to you or, huh. or sort of things like that. But it's. It's between 45 and 70, but usually centered around a 60-year-old guy. You know, That's just a funny demographic. Yeah, I'd get yeah, a kick out of it. Yeah. One, Do you, of the, one of the great things about fans, too, is that they want to feel like they're a part of the band. Yeah. You know, and I think that's really important to them. Because we'll have meet and greets before, before the live show, and people just, they just want to be able to, yeah. to see you and talk to you and feel like they're a part of it. Yeah. I mean, I still have uh, a few fans that that text me on mm -hmm. Facebook every once in a while just say, hey, what's going on? When are you going to be? You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Cause I wonder work. if you're spotted. Are you guys recognized out in the world? <laughs> yeah. I've been a couple of <laughs> so times. I was at my son's uh, basketball game. Yeah. Um, and afterwards, uh, uh, one of the other players' grandfather walked up and he had his phone and he was playing uh, Rosanna by Toto. He's like, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. My yeah. favorite, though, is the story when you wore the lab band shirt at work. You have to remind me. Remember, the, they came up and said, "Oh, you know the lab band? My <laughs> my, my friend James plays oh, drums." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they they had another friend that played drums on some episodes, but they didn't recognize Ryan as being in the band. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think those stories are fun. It wouldn't. No, I, I got recognized in Sam's one day. Yeah. <laughs> I was Sam's shopping, one, and yeah. the guy came in. and said, "You play keys and likes in the lab band, don't you?" I said, "Yeah, I do." He said, "Pretty good." Pretty Turned around, and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I go yeah. get my coffee now. That's right. Yeah. Uh, no, I just I get a kick out of that thing. I think some of the comments that came through about the no ego, you know, what makes us unique. Not one band, really a giant great group of people. Lack of egos in the family. Humility everyone has for what they do. No one has a big head about their talent. No one wants to be famous. Uh, the humility at Lab Band is rare and beautiful. Um, I just think about how you keep that character. It sounds like it's not going to be difficult to keep that spirit alive for however long this band lasts yeah if you've got 10 years down yeah 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 who knows where it's gonna go I mean people just love making the music yeah. I mean that's what it's about it's not about anything else it's about recreating mm -hmm. tracks and 
fellowship and mm -hmm. it's yeah it's yeah. yeah and it's none of our baby like we yeah. didn't write these songs no. yeah. yeah so we, nobody owns it yeah you know it's just like we get to play it and we're all humbled and proud to get to represent mm -hmm. these parts well well and you don't want to let any of the other band members down yeah. you know you you want to make sure you've got your a game going into these sessions because you know mm -hmm. everybody else is on their a game and if you're not you're going to feel pretty bad about it so yeah. you just don't want to let anybody else down yeah and i'll say on the like the fact that it's gone 10 years and and yes i i kind of i kind of have the steering wheel in my hand a lot and put my foot on the gas and that sort of things but there are there are a lot of members and a lot of people including like video people and things who who really help propel and lead this forward. And so the ego part, you just can't be around them and bring that to it. And so it's not just it's not just one person going, hey, we're gonna do this and this is how it's gonna work. There are a lot of people who design websites and work out vocal tracks and parts and um, you know, help with equipment set up and uh, you know, all the behind the scenes sort of stuff. And so when you're around it, you're drawn not just to a singular person or just even just a couple people. It's a whole culture that really there was no intention in that like this wasn't a this we weren't thinking about this like from a from a you know this is what it's going to be in 10 years mm -hmm. we literally thought let's get together and play these four <laughs> doobie brothers songs <laughs> and see how this works and then it's like oh we got to do this again and oh we got to do this again and oh a guest works and oh a live show works and then then all of a sudden it was you know just it's just blossomed and the world has kind of taken note of it and we're like well let's just keep doing it you know because I mean, there was a there was a point in there about four years in where it was like I don't know, you know, if we can do this, you know, and and we just that's when we kind of said, well, let's let's change it from us doing it all and let's just try and shake it up a little bit. And that's what I've done this year is we've we've gone okay, we did the sessions where it was all you know it was all Pink Floyd or it was all Chicago mm -hmm. or it was all and that was great, but now we're trying to do more like one-offs where we bring just a band together and go, here's the three or four songs that work with this group of people. Mm. So then the variety is better. And so mm. we're releasing videos almost weekly. And one week it's, you know, we did one last year that was, uh, you know, Jesse's Girl, which I know is one of your favorites, Rick Springfield. And then we did Your Love by the Outfield. And uh, what was the other one? Um, did you do Scandal on that one? No, Scandal was earlier than that one. Ryan, what was the third one in that 80s? Yeah. I'm blanking. What's, what was it? Eight six seven five three zero nine. 8675 oh, Jenny, yeah. Jenny Jenny right so it's three eighties you know rock tunes and instead of doing all you know all Rick Springfield we said well, yeah. let's 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 diversify it and man people really love that because they're like what's next you know there's there's yeah. less like there's less like oh well there's gonna be another Rick Springfield yeah. song and he only has so many hits so right. it's probably gonna be a deep cut you know they're like oh my gosh I never knew you would do 867 you know and mm -hmm. so we just every year we just try and do something a little bit different mm -hmm. and but again there are so many folks like these guys um, that just, they encapsulate the heartbeat of it and the passion of it and just are willing to do whatever. And sometimes that means giving up their seat. Sometimes that means working really hard on parts or, or squeezing us into a busy schedule or different things like that, that I don't, I think it only will end if, if we just decide we're not gonna do it anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it just kind of has a life of its own and we're just along for the ride. That was a beautiful ending soundbite, but I don't want to leave anything <laughs> on the table. I, I am. I don't no, know good. time wise, but oh, we're we're totally fine. Um, I, I do. Uh, just for the again, fans, is there anything you say you're, you'll see how it all evolves? But is there anything on the horizon that you can give them a preview for? What's what's around the corner for you all, or maybe something fresh or a great song that you know you're working on? So it's tricky. Oh yeah, I mean, well, it's probably be released. I I didn't know you were releasing weekly. We try. We don't. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. We're not. It's a lot totally of content. There, but we're getting there. How? Um, I don't. I'm trying to think of anything that would this this wouldn't proceed. By the time this comes out, everything. Yeah, everything that no, I. No, that's everything, true. Everything that I would. It's not like you're going yeah. on a European tour. I keep telling you guys need to go to, to Japan. No, I mean I think, I think one this. thing one thing that I would love to see grow, and I again I, I don't have a lot of vision for a lot of it other than just getting people together to do music and. One thing I would love to see grow is the live show, which is funny because I did not want to do it because I knew how much work it would be. And I knew what, it, what's that? <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all the work, I'll see yeah. you. <laughs> well, which is, which is funny. And I would, I would, I wish I could say, you know, that I had to do all the work because that's just how it worked. I just control everything. There's a, there's a control mechanism for me 
on the production side and sort of so I knew it was gonna be a ton of work and again he was getting ready to move and I was like well if we're gonna do it this is the time to do it and it was great and almost every year though when we get done with a live show I'd say well I'm never doing that again <laughs> like that was great but that's the last time we're doing that because it's emotionally difficult like it's just it takes it out of you but it's so much uh, just you know security and uh, parking and ticketing and you know all that if all you had a tour stuff. manager or something yeah, like that yeah. maybe that would help well it'd be great yeah if we had unlimited budget it'd be great <laughs> yeah. you know and we want to keep it affordable for people so you know yeah. we don't want but anyways and so but this last year there was just something different about the show this last year they're all been great but when we got done with the show this last year i was driving home at midnight and thought okay well next september when we do this again mm -hmm. and that was the first time i'd ever had that feeling and so I was calling vendors the very next week going, hey, let's get on your schedule. I, I would like to see the live show. There was just something magical about the crowd and we have food trucks and it's just, I would like to see that just continue to grow and become like a destination event for people. Because mm -hmm. what the live show does is it takes what we have on the stage or on the videos and it extends it and brings in all of these folks that just love the music too. and whether they can play or whether they wish they could play or whether they just remember what it was like or you know, I remember seeing Foreigner in 1979 or whatever, the live show gives them a lot of that. And so, man, if we could expand that, that would be, that would be the, that would just be awesome because I think that connects us to the people in a way that just answering them on YouTube or emails or some people have my phone number, which is pretty funny. I get calls, but anyways, I don't know where my number's out there, but but I'll get texts and calls, and I'm like, I don't think I know you. No, I don't know. It's fine, well, in but. in this world of no personal connection or minimal personal connection, yeah. and your heart is so yearning for connection yeah. all the time, it's been the whole theme of this whole project. Mm -hmm. So to then bring fans into that connection, I yeah. can see why that's the ultimate. I think it's that's the next horizon for us is to just make that a something that people just every year. I'm, that's on my calendar. I would love to see that. Yeah. So. It's the only show in town you can go and hear a Dwight Yoakam song and a Lionel Richie song back to back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's it. That's right. That's true. That's right. I hope you know how much it means to everybody else. And if you don't, you'll hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we said we were the OGs, and that stands for old guys. No <laughs> Just Thanks, everybody. Here.